Greetings, Padawans and Flow Jedis. Welcome back to the channel. Flow State Activation is multidimensional march, and we said it again. Multidimensional march is all about expansiveness, okay? It's about exploring the infinite possibilities of this universe. If you're new to this channel, I'm a Flow State catalyst, an alchemist, a specialist, whatever you want to label me as. I am Sumed Chatterjee. I'm known as Dr. Scripps in IMC Nation. I am a very, very well-trained practitioner of the flow state, and I improve myself every single day, okay? Today, I was doing a little bit of grappling and some kickboxing, and I realized how healing pressure can be. When I'm stuck in a headlock or I can't get out of a choke or an armbar, and I'm being dragged through the mud on the mat, I remind myself of just being slower, more tactical, loosening up any of the rigidity in my body and slowly healing, using the tension as a signpost for me to say, all right, this is what I need to do next. This is what I need to tap into right now. You get what I mean? And it's such a beautiful thing when we can understand this mechanism because a lot of our lives, you know, we get easily crushed. Our spirit gets easily crushed, okay, by society, by other people's opinions. And if your spirit is easily crushed, there's no long-term benefits in this flow state mastery journey, right? So this is why being unbreakable, being like a diamond, but at the same time understanding you're like diamond and like water. Yes, there's the way of the water. Yes, there is the thunderbolt Vajrayana diamond path, okay? The diamond could cut anything that is going... Like, if I have a mission, it's going to get to the end goal, right? But it's also going to hurt people along the way. Now, the diamond also knows to... You know, it, it's built from the pressure, right? And the diamond can be used to cut other objects in a sense, to actually make it and be more formidable. So that is a powerful force, right? A flow to be reckoned with, as I like to call it. Now, there's the, then there's the water, right? Now, some people think that this is too wishy-washy just to be like water and allow everything to flow. It's also an aspect of being the flow and not just going with the flow, right? And that's what we have to understand on this channel. It's context-dependent, okay? In one moment, we must be yang. In one other, other moment, we must be yin. Okay? Pressure on, pressure off. This is the process. Every single moment, you're finding that in between. You're finding the sweet spot of how to act in each moment. And it's moment dependent and it's moment specific. There is no one way or one path or one thing like this. Okay? And of course, there is. There is one path. But I'm not saying that like... You know, these go-to general rules of like, oh, I'm a diamond, I'm going to be a diamond all the time. Okay, no, you got to be a diamond, then morph into water, then you got to become fire in a moment. You got to have humility, but also ferocity. You've got to be calm, but also be a little bit, you know, quick and on edge. And then you also, it's like versatility. You get what I mean? Like an actor who has training, and I've trained acting before, they understand that, you know, if you want to get the better roles, you have to improve your body, right? You have to do combat training. You have to do a lot of these different things, right? Just to be in that character, to at least fit into the role that is being portrayed. So if you have a role for yourself that you're trying to create on this journey of life, you're going to have to have some malleable activities like that, that you rep and activities will actually shed your ego which shut down that thinking mind. This is where the flow state comes in, right? The inner critic just completely goes offline, it disappears. So once you're in the craft, you don't have this mental chatter of like, oh, I hope that I hope that this doesn't happen. I hope that that doesn't happen. I hope that this, now you're just in your mind, bro, because you're in the future and you're in the past. You're not in the now. If you're worrying about, I hope that this doesn't happen and I hope that I get this. And you have to watch that kind of language with yourself, okay? It's really, really, really important that we discuss these things. Uh, and I know I was going over some of the Indian stereotypes in the last video too. 
man, my whole life has been me breaking Indian stereotypes, negative ones, not positive ones, obviously. Like there's things in our culture that are so beautiful and majestic, you know, that I want to hold on to as values and strong values. But when I see this dude, H, I don't know who the fuck this dude even is, man, but the H3 guy, you know, who keeps saying things like, you know, aren't Indians just the goofiest people in the world, you know? I, have I ever liked an Indian in my life? I don't think so, right? He's just saying all this nonsense and someone needs to shut that guy up, bro. Because honestly, I can't take his bumbling, fumbling ass anymore, okay? That guy needs to learn a lesson. Like, he doesn't even know what the fuck he's talking about, okay? Have you actually met an Indian person who is of a higher caliber, okay? India is a huge, okay, place. It's like the second population of the world, bro. And you're saying you haven't met any Indians that you like? What the, what are you talking about, bro? You haven't even been to India before. So stop talking trash and get on this level, okay? You can't even make fun of me, bro. And I'm gonna stand up for my people. You can't make fun of us, bro. You get that? Even in, even in my accent, I can still sound sexy. I can still make it work. I can still be adaptable and magnificent. I don't need to, you know, be this exaggerated Hollywood archetype of the Quickie Mart employee or like the guy who, you know, we have to break all of these archetypes, man. You gotta make yourself look different than every other Indian person. Cause there's, there's too many of us out there, honestly, right? You gotta, you gotta stand out in some way as an Indian guy if you're gonna play this game. Okay. Have you seen that video where, um, you know, these girls choose guys to go on dates with and one guy just goes, okay, the, uh, one of these guys is my boyfriend. And one guy goes from the corner, he goes, can't be number four. And number four is like this Indian guy, right? And you see the kind of like, he's, he's smiling a little bit, but you can see the anger and the passive aggressiveness and sadness on his face. Right. And I feel bad for that guy, man. Cause it's like, we, we've experienced this kind of thing. I've experienced racism, okay? Different parts of the world. I admit that, okay? I don't look like everybody else. I don't sound like everybody else, but guess what? I became a rebel because of that. I said, fuck you to all of those rules. I started to change, I started to adapt, I started to do things differently. I started to listen to hip hop. I started to, you know, rap battle. I started to, really push myself into all these different accolades in different areas, right? And now I'm starting to understand how all this, all these puzzle pieces just fit together so perfectly. You get what I mean? You gotta understand that you can't have crutches in life. You get that? If you have too many crutches, like I have to drink alcohol in order to socialize. I have to do this in order to get that, okay? No, you don't. You've just been trained like that. Society has brainwashed you into thinking like this, okay? No. Bro, life doesn't work like that, okay? I was telling you yesterday about this, this concept or this idea of being really, really articulate with how you speak. You get what I mean? Like, you have to make sense. Your words have to make sense. They can't just float around in nothingness. And even if they're floating around, they have to float back down into some grounded evidence, some kind of, you know, logic that makes sense. And, and to me, I, all I've been doing, even as a mystic, I've just been making sense of things, okay? And some things in mysticism don't make sense. They're completely irrational. I have to trust my intuition completely, okay? But this is something that you've got to learn, is don't get tra trapped in your own false beliefs because your false beliefs will keep you in the comfort. The false beliefs, if, if you get challenged and there's adversity and there's chaos, that's when the false beliefs shed away. You get to that real self. If you're scared being naked and vulnerable and exposed, and no, you're still caught up in false beliefs, my friend. You're still caught you're still caught up in all these narratives that, that aren't serving you, that don't make sense, that, that, that have no closure, that they're just like 
dot, dot, dots in the mind and question marks in the mind, whereas they need to be full stops. They need to be exclamation points. You get what I mean? Like there's certain things in your mind that don't make sense. Okay, you haven't made sense of them. And that's why you're overthinking a lot because you haven't made sense of what you're really thinking. Like it has no closure. It could be a maybe. And maybe is dangerous because it still creates this dopamine and keeps you in this feedback loop, this negative feedback loop, right? Maybe it'll happen, maybe it won't. Maybe it'll happen, maybe it won't. Maybe it'll happen, maybe it won't. Oh, shit. I'm 60 years old. You, you get what I mean? Your life is going to pass you by this maybe little hesitation game that you keep playing, bro. Stop procrastinating on your mission. Okay? Who is that really helping? I think it's a lack of gratitude for time itself. Time is such a beautiful thing, memento mori, remember your death, okay? Understand, this is the way of life, the stoic way of life, amor fati, memento mori, okay, carpe diem, ad vitam ad culpam. These stoic principles are a way of life, it's a way of living. You can't just suddenly pull out a, a stoic technique from your back pocket and be like, ah, amor fati, right now, boom, right? Like some kind of pokeball that you're carrying, bro, no, it's not a technique. That's the thing, you're using a crutch. You're using a technique as a crutch. A technique is a technique. It's helped to refine you and get more into the muscle memory, more into the system, more into who you actually are, right? The technique becomes the tech, the techno man, the technologically advanced man, the mechanical man, as Bruce Lee says, right? That's the, what the technique does. Don't rely on the technique thinking it's like all that, right? You learn some cool thing to say, right? You learned some cool line and now you're trying to impress some girl with a cool line that you learned. Oh uh, yeah, oh, oh, oh. right? You, you hear somebody else say it and it sounds good when they say it, but then you try to reproduce that. And it's like, you can't tap into the authenticity anymore. It's like, cause, cause you've been practicing using this fake line. And again, these are just training wheels, I get it. Like training wheels are fine, right? But training wheels come off too, remember. Training wheels come off and then you actually learn how to ride the bike. You get it? So my whole life, man, I've been breaking all these Indian stereotypes, but there's still some of them that are still permeating in my subconscious. All of them haven't gone yet. I, I noticed this. It's in the back of my mind. I'm very conscious of it. And I need to accept it more, that's the thing. I need to love it more in order for me to actually let it go. I have to understand it better. You see, when I love something, I understand it, I delve into it. But once I understand the whole picture, then I can go, whew, I can drop that thing, okay? But right now, like for instance, a high value person, a 1%, whatever you want to call this thing, right? I just call it, <laughs> I just call it the priest beast, man, because that's the best archetype that I can describe, is the man who is fully in his yang and has a little sprinkle of yin that, that adds to that natural, you know, essence. Just a good, genuine person, you know? Has a spirituality check, and has his balls in check, okay? Isn't cutting down his balls just to be spiritual, isn't just being spiritual and then cutting, you know, you know? It's, it's not one or the other, okay? They're not mutually exclusive, spirituality and the primal. They're part of the same thing. So you need one in order to get one, okay? In order to ascend, you need to ground, as we've mentioned in Primal Sutra, right? So. Once you start understanding, you can heal using the pressure, you can heal using the tension, and you can break all of these negative stereotypes, okay? Indians are really good at math, okay? That's a good stereotype, yeah, that's awesome. I was never really good at math, but I broke that stereotype in a sense, you know what I mean? However, start to understand all of these ones, right? We, we see these examples of Indian dudes and they're like, Bob's in Vagine, like, hello. Like, uh, Brian sent me this, this just made me feel disgusted, bro. It was a statue, a Roman statue of a woman. And the comments are from, are from Indian guys, the same. Hello, beautiful, good morning, sunshine, heart, 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 times infinity. Okay, bro, you need to calm it down, okay? You need to just slow it down. There's positivity and radiance and actually giving someone a compliment. Oh, but bro, she's hurt. You are beautiful. Heart eye, heart eye, heart eye. 
probably millions of times. If she's a high value woman and she's thriving in the world, you think she's not expecting the 1100th Indian guy to comment with hard eyes and, and, and smiling emojis and sunshine and rainbows? Are you still stuck in like Bollywood land, bro? I really need to know what's going on in these guys' lives, that they're this delusional, this gullible, this indecisive, this confused about social interaction. How are you not knowing that this is a statue, bro? It's a statue. <laughs> That's a little funny though as well, at the same time. Maybe it's just a meme, but these memes are memes for a reason. Cliches are cliches for a reason. It's because there's a grain of truth in them, my friends. And you need to realize what that grain of truth is to you, okay? I understand that I'm, I, man, I love some of the Indian stuff that I'm reading about, you know, Hindu gods and Mahabharata and, you know, Mahabharata, sorry. I don't want to pronounce it in an American way. Um, and, uh, you know, doing yoga, understanding, you know, transcendental meditation, all of these different things, these beautiful things that our culture gives us. But we're focused on what? Okay? India's slow little mini awakening of its feminism? Like, do you, do you realize that there, there's something so important here that we're overlooking? We need both yin and yang energy. We need to be integrated as men and women, but there is an extreme split, right? The radical feminism and then the manosphere. Where is the in-between? Where are people having genuine discussions in the in-between, in the liminal space, in the flow state? Why are we so fucking polarized? And why is no one speaking about this? Because they're afraid, okay? Look, you can't be stuck in this people pleaser flattery thing because again, that's gonna, that's gonna build your false beliefs. You get what I mean? When I say this, I really want you to think about this, okay? Because this is a really important point. <clears throat> I want you to really think about this. I need to straighten my back. I just realized that's why I'm here. I want you to really think about this. Flattery is gonna get you nowhere. People who clap for you every time that you do something, that's great. The support, the genuine support, I love, man. That's great. That keeps me going, that keeps me motivated. When I get a really genuine comment from someone, I can sense that this is genuine. But then you get a comment from someone that's like, all right, what do you want, bro? Or like, yeah, uh, <laughs> I already know you're trying to sell me something, okay? I don't need to hear this. And this flattery will get you nowhere. You're, Cause you, your applause for you has to be louder than anybody else, bro. You're waiting for that one person to give you that applause and give you a permission slip so you can finally succeed. Stop waiting. Stop in, being in this limbo space, in this waiting room. And understand there's nothing wrong with being there either. I love being in the waiting space at times, but I understand that I can leave when I need to. I'm not attached to it, right? I'm not stuck here just thinking about, you know, all the possible scenarios and then, you know, plotting my escape and then, you know, no. It's actually me recognizing the effervescence, the efficiency, the manageability, right? The maintenance of actually doing something that starts to stack. Huh. Huh. One second. And when you realize that, you know, this world isn't going to adjust 
to whatever your beliefs are, right? It isn't just gonna magically adapt to what you're thinking, right? Everybody has their own preconceptions, notions, beliefs around their own culture, you know, ways that they were nurtured when they were growing up, you know, different things that make them very special and unique. And then you come along with your strategy and no one gives a fuck, right? So you've got to go and really start to understand that I'm going to purify and clarify my heart and my mind, okay? There's a, there's a brilliant song by NF, okay? I think it's called Hope, I'm not too sure. It's the one where he's uh, rapping about the heart and the mind going back and forth, right? I think NF is, a, is the GOAT, man. Like what, one of the greatest artists that have emerged that I've heard of. In terms of lyricism, right? Actually building a story and like, like getting his point across through the lyricism and the rap. Like that's dope, you know? Uh, I really appreciate that. Uh, I think The Search was another good one that he had. A, a bunch of his songs that I've heard recently is just incredible, incredible stuff. And we always have this heart of mind tug of war. And I heard this once in my uh, master's program, right? When I went to the UK. And I believe we were learning something like ex existential coaching. And it was around, yeah, it was like coaching psychology, right? Stuff. And I remember this one teacher saying, I think it was Yannick. I'm not too sure if it was Yannick or one of the other teachers, but I remember that Yannick said, if you're ever having a war between your heart and your mind, and you're, you know, you're pulling, your heart is pulling and your mind is pulling, you just gotta drop the rope and relax in that moment. And the answer will emerge. So this, this idea of taking down the rope to stop the internal conflict where you just, all right, heart. You know, what if the heart and the mind both drop the rope, right? Together. They decide, nope, no point fighting. <sighs> then you breathe, you take some deep breaths. You're back online, you're back in presence. Before you were somewhere else. You're like, uh huh, uh huh. You're listening to someone talk, but you're not really listening. This is why we need to actively be good listeners to practice this deep, present joy of the flow. We need to practice being very, very good listeners. We need to understand our perspectives and be able to shift it, zooming in, zooming out, seeing the Hakalau panoramic vision, as I've mentioned, and the single-pointed dharana focus. When you can have both, this becomes a magical experience, baby, okay? Why not both? That's what you can ask yourself today. Why not both, okay? And that's the thing. Your mind is gonna give you all of these answers. Everyone's gonna come along and what will people think about you if you do this or if you do that? Who? Who are these random people? Do I care about them? Are they important to my life? Well, have them confront me personally. Why are you the spokesperson for all these other people? Right? But that's really not in our culture. You know, we don't really do that. You have to be respect. When was I not being respectable? I'm showing respect in the best way that I can. I'm articulating how I feel right now. Yeah, you know, but others know, you know, the world is very messed up and I don't, well, I don't think the world is really messed up. I think it's a beautiful, glorious place. I and mean, look at how the sun is just hitting the right spots and look how there's a cow down there, right? How is there, you can hear it. How is that not beautiful, bro? Like a random, <laughs> a random cow, you know, just showing up chilling with me how is that not lit i don't get it the world is awesome man such a solid place and everybody keeps bad mouthing it and saying oh yes we have fighting and corruption and wars and politics and you know oh, i can't travel with vaccination and, and oh and i can't do that and all oh, the, the listen 
whatever you focus on is going to grow. If you're keeping on focusing on that one problem over and over again, you think you're going to solve it? No, because you're problem oriented. You're not solution oriented. You get it? Your mind is immediately going to the fear and that's what they're going to do to you. They're going to make you fearful. That's what the media and the news is there to do. It's this, this sensationalist thing. It's going to make you tap into a nervous system that is completely dysregulated. Look at a lot of the motivational speakers out there. What are they doing? They're raising your heart rate up. They're trying to scare you into buying something or push your pain point so much until you press buy. Do you get that? Do you get that that's not genuine? Do you get that that is a way? And again, they're just doing what they have to do. We're all, you know, animals in this jungle. But we cannot disconnect from source as we do that. The greatest uh, seducers that I've known on this planet, they've had a touch of the holy, a touch of the sacred. Otherwise, they can't do that. You think if Casanova never had a touch of the sacred or a touch of the divine, right? That gnosis, that elegance, that eloquence, that, that comes from something else. You know, it comes from something higher, not lower. So the higher and the lower have to be well integrated. And that's the thing. So I work with darker energies and I work with lighter energies, light beings too. I don't discriminate like that. I'm not like gonna be like, oh, no, absolutely not. You're from the Goetia. And I'm not gonna be like, hey, wait a second. I'm going to protect this one energy. Now, I know also not to be a fool. A fool would be doing a dark energy and a light energy ritual in the same room next to each other together, okay? <laughs> That's just, wait, no, 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 no. That's not going to work, bro. Why? Because they're, they're opposites, okay? Have you ever heard of a thermal combustion? Like, have you heard of physics? Like, negative, positive. It's going to cause an explosion, okay? Look at what you're doing. Just think about it, okay? You'll figure this game out once you think with your mind and you feel with your heart, and they both synchronize in harmony. That's brain-heart coherence, okay? As they work together. And then you live a flow state lifestyle that creates more brain-heart coherence, that gets you more into a gamma wave, and you can relax your whole life, basically. You can not relax your whole life, I mean, because that's kind of boring too. It's just like, oh, what are you doing today? Oh yeah, I'm just chilling. Oh, hey man, it's, uh, it's another time. Uh, what's good with you? Oh, you know, I'm just working, just chilling. Nothing exciting happening? No, just chilling, you know? Just working out, doing something. Bro, you can give those answers to your enemies, right? But your genuine true friends, bro, you're letting them down. You're letting down your tribe. You're letting down your empire. You're not standing for evolution. You're not standing for advancement. Ah, thank you. You've got to take a stand for bettering yourself, for bettering others. That's what we're here for. That's what we're here for, man. That is what we are here for. We are here for to make an effort, to do things that will make us intelligent, dangerous human beings that are catalysts for the secret hidden worlds and the secret hidden realms. I will not be stopped and I will not be banished. You can try to come for me, but I will come for you too. You see, if you try to come for me, I will come for you. <laughs> okay, that's how we work. It's like, that's so childish, bro. You know, someone did, someone made fun of you. Oh, your mom is fat. You go, what? Are you serious? You get all defensive. Don't talk about my mom like that, bro. Okay, you get, you get stiff, you get rigid, you get serious. That's when they can play, play with you even more. They tease you even more. You've, you've seen bullies, right? They're getting, they want a reaction from you, bro. The bully wants a reaction from you. I know this from my past bullies and how I've overcome those situations. I don't fuck around with bullies, bro. I go straight to the authority, right? Who's the bully here in charge? Then who are they speaking? Are they speaking to me, right? 
then you got to understand that, that sometimes it's based on like, okay, you can't take on like eight people, right? You're not like fucking Jackie Chan where you can like in a tiny little elevator, you can flip over and do cartwheels and like kick people in the shin. Okay, not yet. Not yet. Maybe you can't. I don't know. Maybe you're lit. <laughs> Welcome to the channel, bro. Awesome to have a, a ninja on this channel watching. And I, I know a lot of great, amazing people watching watch this channel. So I do know that. I know some badasses that definitely watch this channel. That, you know, they, they see the realness. They see the depth and, and the truth coming from me. Because you have this within you too. That's what you're recognizing, bro. You can pick up a camera and do this too. You can, you can inspire the world, okay? Don't give up so easily. And when you do give up, make sure it's real. Like the giving up is, is true to you and it's gonna actually help your path evolve if you stop that dead end job or you know, leave that toxic relationship or fly to uh, a new country and, and check it out, right? Like these moments, of course, you're gonna feel frustrated and there's gonna be stress and there's gonna be heartache and, and a lot of stuff to deal with. But once you've actually transmuted that, you, you know that you have some badass lessons from that breakup, you know. You have some incredible epiphanies from an empty wallet. I know I do, okay? Man, I remember when I used to buy so many clothes, bro. Just like stack on cloth after cloth after cloth when I didn't really even need it. You get that? That comes from that privileged mentality. Like, you know what I mean? And I'm tired of living like that. Now I sleep on the floor, bro. I don't even care for comfort anymore. I'm doing the opposite of what society told me to do. Because I am that character in the video game that's gonna cause a glitch. I'm, the di I'm from that Diogenes tradition, right? I'm from that tradition of mystics, monks, seers, rebels, misfits, the people who are here to cause a ripple effect, a fucking change in this world. So it's not so bleh, you know, bland. You gotta add some flavor, some spice, some color. There is no one answer to everything, okay? There is no one answer to any question. It can be answered in a multiple ways. This is why discussions are so important, right? Talking about the texts and then having a discussion around it to add greater insight, greater depth. So you're a sounding board for your ideas. You get all your friends together like a Socratic seminar. You discuss all these deep, you know, topics of seduction, of, of, of communication, of how to change your mindset, how to get a better life how to improve your health and physique and creating this, this ginormous community based on that. But also because you understand this indescribable truth. And this indescribable truth is that you are more sacred than you think. Okay, discipline is sacred. The word comes from disciple, Christ. Okay. I've understood word alchemy very, very well. And I understand how powerful word alchemy really is. This is a part of the video where I start winding down now because it's 33, 33 right now. Okay. <laughs> You guys realize that Mu backwards is Om? <laughs> so, Om Shanti 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 Na Sat Gamaya You know how they say that like at the, <laughs> the chant at the end of yoga? Oh man. Be a listener with intention. As you listen to all of me just spill this like, you know, spontaneous uh, freestyle lab report for you right now. Uh, you know what, I wanna talk a little bit longer. Um, I wanna speak up around the response that you give to an environment where there's a lot of things happening at once, right? Your response, even in that pressure, is the most convincing way to know that you're unbreakable, that you are just unstoppable, that you're unreactive, that you're just that cold, that you're the iceberg, that 
you know, tips down all the other ships. Someone makes a comment about you, you laugh at it. Like, okay, funny, bro. Okay, eye roll, middle finger, brush it off. Yeah, <laughs> whatever, dude. Okay, I'm a freaking Royal Bengal tiger, and this is a hyena, my friends. I have no interest in merging with this kind of human being. They don't have the same ethics as me. They don't have the same values as me. Okay, they don't have the same life quality as me. They don't have the mo same momentum as me. So why am I comparing myself to somebody else who has zero qualifications to be a flow state catalyst in my own life? You get it? Mo if I tell you right now, who's the most important person to you? And you say, oh, my parents, you know, I love them to death. And, and some of you will say, oh, yes, this one, you know, celebrity or this one mentor, or this amazing world-class leader or politician or, oh, yeah, this, this person, that person. But then there's the true OGs of this craft. The true OGs will tell you something. The true OGs will tell you something. What will they tell you? The true OGs will say, I am the most important person to me. Why? Because it's my life. How can I go into a world leader's mind and start reading their mind and, and understanding that they're the most important person to me when I don't know anything about them? I'm just seeing their highlight reel of, of my own interpretation of what I think their life is like. But who do you know more than you than you? You don't. You don't know anybody as much as you know yourself. You've known yourself ever since you were a little, you know, molecule, a little speck in the womb, right? Like just invisible. So you got to understand, man, you've been with yourself this entire time. Now it's time you start loving yourself indefinitely. Now it's time you start embracing a little bit of difficulty and challenging yourself. Why? Because the sage does that, man. You could be like, oh, are you saying that you're a sage, bro? Like you're wearing your, doc your rock beads and you're thinking you're just talking on YouTube and you can be a sage? I think you're not the right person to watch this channel. That's what I think. If you're making critical judgments and comments like that, you're not getting this vibe, this, this lit ass, you know, uh, this energy. You're on something else, okay? And I have not, I want nothing to do with any of you who are in that negative frequency, okay? I can learn from you. I can learn what not to do. But ain't no way anybody taking away my flow state. Ain't no way anybody crushing my good vibe by some little comment that they make. Get out of here, okay? This is, like, this does not belong in my worldview, okay? And things can happen. I mean, they will happen. You know what I mean? Of course, I'm going to get challenged. Of course, I'm going to be taken down. Of course, there, there'll be moments where I'll be defeated. But guess what? I still stay in this pocket, this frequency of flow state. And I just keep riding. Just keep on flowing, baby. That's it. Upward Spiral Gang, may we never be the same again. You already know, multidimensional march. Hit that like button. Hit that notification bell so you know when I'm dropping a video every day. More, you heard it. Let's get it. Upward spiral.